Introduction In 1934, Yuan Tian traveled to a parallel world and became the son of a Chinese autonomous state warlord in Australia, activating the system and beginning the development of industrial economy. In three years, he became the commander dot in dot chief with 300,000 troops, and his subordinates could no longer wait for Australia to be under the control of their Chinese people. They could no longer become British colonies and must become independent. On October 10, 1937, under the leadership of his subordinates in yellow robes and surrounded by the Chinese people, he seized the entire Australia and ascended to the throne as emperor. The Austro-Chinese Empire was officially born, and at this time, World War II also broke out. Britain We acknowledge the formal independence of the Austro-Chinese Empire and sell us some weapons. Japan We will definitely not attack the Austro-Chinese Empire. Please do not airstrike and bomb our homeland again. Chiang Kai-shen Your Majesty Yuan Tian, please support some more weapons. Eagle Sauce the Austro-Chinese Empire can still make more money than us, why is their territory getting bigger and bigger? Felu Novel Network reminds you that this novel and its characters are purely fictional. If there are any similarities, they are purely coincidental and should not be imitated. 001, Crossing Australia in 1934, Beginning with Warlords You are listening at NovelFull.audio Australia is an independent land. It is also the only land that does not border with other countries. This is known as the country on the mining cart, rich and prosperous. Inside a foreign mansion, a young man with sword eyes and a calm expression, dressed in military uniform, had a meticulous expression. In front of him was a huge world map, looking at the current situation around the world. The young man slowly lit a cigarette, his eyes filled with complexity. Is it 1937? Time is really fleeting. This young man's name is Yuan Tian. Three years ago, he crossed over and became a second dot generation warlord in the parallel world of the Commonwealth of Australia. And in this era, Australia was a federal system, divided into three autonomous states. The Xinza Lanzhou where Yuan Tian was located was a warlord ruled by the Chinese in the autonomous prefecture, and his ancestors held military power in this prefecture for generations, similar to feudal lords. The warlord power itself was not strong, but it awakened the system when Yuan Tian crossed over. Under the guidance of modern knowledge and the Golden Finger God level black technology system, we will develop military industry step by step, promote local industries, and grow from weak to strong. In three years, a steel lion with a force of 100,000 has been built. Although it is a warlord, it still adopts military management. Yuan Tian, a famous figure deeply loved within the warlords, is definitely the central figure. In the past three years, Yi Tian has not acted recklessly like other warlords second dot generation, eating and waiting to die, but has been accumulating strength to truly survive in this chaotic world. In 1937, the outbreak of a real world war is a disaster that sweeps across the world, and no one can avoid it. To survive, one must master power. And the Australia where Yi Tian is located is not a pure land, and it is bound to be swept up in the future. In the past three years, their army has developed and become stronger than before, but in the turbulent times of the future, it will still be a small boat amidst strong winds and rain. Only when they become truly powerful will they not be slaughtered. Yi Tian has no intention of surrendering his fate to the masters of history. And he discovered that even in a parallel world, the major events that occur in this world are no different from the previous one, so he can make arrangements in advance. Yi Tian's gaze shifted to Australia on the map, which was their stronghold. At present, the situation in Australia is complex, not led by a single government, but rather by the existence of the Commonwealth of Australia as a whole, yet independent of each other. The Australian Commonwealth has a complex population, including local residents, but most of the people living here are composed of European immigrants and Chinese immigrants, occupying a dominant position. Except for New Jersey, the other two states are all managed by white people. 
the Yuan family has the right to control the development of various parts of Australia's land, have their own military, and ensure their own interests. From various conditions, Australia has a favorable geographical location, abundant resources, and is located in Oceania. With an area of 7.69 million kilometers and a population of 10 million, it is definitely a paradise without territorial disputes. It is an incompletely exploited feng shui treasure land. But this is also a British colony that suffered a fatal invasion, for no other reason than its geographical conditions and resources. Australia is rich in mineral resources, oil, and natural gas, with at least 70 types of mineral resources, bauxite reserves rank first in the world, accounting for 35% of the world's total reserves. The forest coverage area accounts for 20% of the national territory, with a natural forest area of approximately 155 million hectares. In addition to being surrounded by the sea on all sides and isolated from the world, it is basically difficult for other countries to invade, which forms a natural protection routine. This kind of abundant resources and geographical environment has long been coveted by Western colonizers, regarded as something in their pockets. In the 19th century, the ancestors of the Yuan family immigrated to this place from Southeast Asia and discovered its abundant resources, which were suitable for survival. They then settled here. Later, more and more Chinese people chose to immigrate to this land in Australia to fight for their rights. With Australia's land resources, not to mention a population of 10 million, or even a population of 100 million, it is more than enough. Both the land resources extracted and the livestock resources are quite abundant, with wild rabbits and other meat animals flooding in, making it completely self-sufficient. The Yuan family saw this and settled here, bringing Chinese people to mine land and establish this paradise, ensuring their development. After various memories, Yuan Tian looked at the portraits behind him, which were the achievements made by their ancestors in this land of Australia. The ancestors of the Yuan family even led the Chinese to compete for their rights on this land in Australia, ensuring the interests of the Chinese and not being bullied by others. Gradually becoming a Chinese leader, gaining control over the military power in Australia, possessing military power, supporting and valuing oneself, and now not daring to bully them. As for those white people who came here to colonize, they did indeed intend to drive out the Chinese and use violent means, even slavery, to restrict their rights. But the ancestors of the Yuan family dared to resist and punched out the hard truth, and these white people who were afraid of the hard and bullied the soft dared not really have any opinions. But their inherent discrimination is difficult to change, and they have even repeatedly exploited the interests of Chinese people, believing that white people are supreme. Unfortunately, the Yuan family does not follow this pattern. Their army is not vegetarian, and whoever dares to harm their interests will be attacked. Under the development of this century, 50% of the entire Australia is now composed of Chinese, accounting for the largest population. The rest of the population are immigrants from all over Europe and the world, all planning to come to Australia to develop resources and become farmers. Although the number of white people is rare, they have established a series of irregular systems at the pinnacle of Australian dominance. For example, white people enjoy the highest rights, even divide people into different classes, and even exploit the profits of Chinese people. Chinese people here face various forms of discrimination. Although the Yuan family can shelter some Chinese people, under the rule of white people, it is impossible to ensure the profits of every Chinese person. If you don't explode in silence, you will perish in silence. Nowadays, Chinese Australians have long been dissatisfied with this white man's rule over Australia, let alone being in this British colony and suffering from oppression, making it difficult for the people to make a living. It is absurd that there are Chinese people who have suffered from bullying and starvation despite such abundant land resources. These white people feel that they are the true masters, being squeezed by the West and Britain, and contributing resources unconditionally every year, with most of the profits being taken away by others. Nowadays, these Chinese people yearn for their own profits. If Australia does not establish itself as a country and does not have a dominant position, it will always be the object of exploitation by Britain. 
They want to become a true country, and the entire Australia must be managed by their Chinese people. This is also their Yuan family's plan, and Yuan Tian will also hold high the banner of resistance, truly putting Australia under their Chinese management and establishing a country. The Yuan family has never forgotten the prophets of the Chinese people. A great man born between heaven and earth, how can he remain gloomy and stay under people for a long time? Yuan Tian murmured to himself, then his eyes showed a hint of brilliance. Now that time is ripe, they will raise their troops to overthrow the colonization of western countries and truly turn this place into their own territory. Australia is going to become independent. 002, Yuan Jiaqiang's great military equipment strength, please command in chief. You are listening at novel full dot audio. And Yuan Tian's identity goes without saying, he is naturally a traveler. Due to an accident, he crossed the state of the Commonwealth of Austria and became a warlord. As a traveler, he naturally carried his golden finger and activated the Super Black Technology System. And Super Black Technology is also simple and easy to understand, which is a black technology system that uses funds and completes tasks to obtain rewards. Inside, there are space carriers, spacecraft, nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, and phantom tanks. Down to various laser firearms, weapons and equipment, and various energy equipment. Basically, there was everything in the system. With the help of the Super Black Technology System, in just three years, Yuan Tian was able to turn the tide with the system, not only expanding his warlord forces, but also sitting in his father's position. At a young age, he became the commander of one side, and even now he has become the commander in chief of the Commonwealth of Australia, holding military power in his own state. Not only that, Yuan Tian also expanded the number of troops, increased staffing, and employed a series of methods such as recruitment to expand his military strength. In three years, the army expanded from 100,000 to 300,000, becoming the largest warlord unit in the state faction and gaining significant rights in this land of Australia. In these three years, the entire Australia has a 300,000 strong army, which was dispatched by the Yuan family and mostly composed of Chinese people. Now, relying on the system for three years, they have expanded their warlord power and further improved the local territory. With the help of the Black Technology System, the local state dispatched the creation of industries, cultivating a large number of cattle and sheep, cultivating wasteland, planting cattle and sheep and developing the real economy. Basically, the income of the local people has increased dramatically, and the economic development has taken it to the next level. These produced wheat and beef and mutton can be exported to various parts of the world, with excellent quality. At the same time, Yuan Tian is also vigorously building and developing construction in Australia, turning the land into farmland and returning it to the people, ensuring a bountiful harvest through drought and flood. Various light and heavy industries, including the military industry, are developing. Various textile factories, grain factories, and oil extraction and animal husbandry factories have emerged like mushrooms after rain, basically developing and improving. He utilized Australia's natural advantages and achieved remarkable results in the mineral and livestock industries, including wheat cultivation, worldwide. In a short period of time, the level of light and heavy industry has reached the forefront of the world, and the level of economic development has not fallen. Machinery is flourishing, and important infrastructure measures such as roads, railways, docks, dams, bridges, etc. are being built. If you want to get rich, first build roads. Yuan Tian manages the transportation system of the local state, which is well connected and convenient for transportation. Although the interior is not filled with high dot rise buildings, it is not much different. Local people live and work happily, implement compulsory education, establish schools, hospitals, and banks. These decisions were made one by one based on the experience of Yuan Tian's previous life, including improvements in medical measures. Medical education is managed by the Yuan family, and capital will never interfere, that's all. 
In just three years, the once poorest state faction has risen to become the most developed place in Australia, with public support even reaching 100%. Of course, the military industry has not declined either. In order to maintain their status as the Yuan family in Australia, they also relied on their strong military power to create their three armies, the Navy and Army. With the assistance of the Black Technology System, the Trinity Army and Integrated Combat Forces were successfully established. At present, the total military strength of their Yuan family has reached 300,000 people, which is not a minority. It should be noted that the entire population of Australia consists of only 10 million people, although 50% are Chinese, that is only 5 million. Furthermore, these 5 million Chinese people are distributed across three continents, with a force of 300,000, which can be said to be quite terrifying. As the main force of the army, there are a total of 200,000 personnel, equipped with Yuan-style AK-47 rifles, M29 General Dot Purpose machine guns, rocket launchers, and 105 mm howitzers. In terms of tanks, there are also Tiger tanks and light tanks, as well as various artillery systems. Excellent equipment, definitely ranking among the top in the world, basically based on modern training goals. The plan specially formulated by Yuan Tian can be said to be a very strong army force. In terms of the Air Force, the Yuan family had a total of 50,000 people. We have Mustang fighter jets, B-29 strategic bombers, Mi-109 fighter jets, and more. Among them, the B-29 strategic bomber is even more outstanding, and it is also the strongest strategic bomber of World War II. The B-29 Super Air Fortress bomber, which is also the most powerful bomber in history, with absolute air superiority. Even if there are only 50,000 people, once this air force is deployed, it will definitely make the enemy tremble with fear. As for the Navy, having 50,000 personnel is just beginning. Although Australia is adjacent to the sea, their naval power has not yet developed, but Australia's geographical advantage makes their coastline extremely long. The geographical location is also surrounded by the sea, which is very suitable for the development of the Navy. Even if it is just starting, they have established a naval training base and have several warships. As a navigator, Yuan Tian naturally knew the importance of the Navy and had already started preparing naval members in advance, until they could truly have the technology to build aircraft carriers in the future. These members can also be put to use immediately, only with a Navy can they have absolute hegemony at sea. With the help of this system, they have built a navy that has shocked the world in three years. The Australian military has also become the strongest integrated combat department. Three days later, a secret meeting within the commander.in.chief is being held here. And Yuan Tian's capable subordinates, including Chen Xingzhou, took a deep breath with excitement on their faces. Commander-in-chief, the time is right now. Let's mutiny and not let Australia be destroyed by these white men. Yeah, Australia must be led by us Chinese and we can no longer accept Western countries' exploitation. We already have the ability to replace them. Upon hearing this, Yuan Tian's eyes were sharp, knowing that the timing was ripe. His subordinates had already been rubbing their hands and waiting for his command. It is possible to directly mutiny and seize power, completely ending the era of white rule. They want to break free from the oppression of Britain, Australia must become independent. The land resources in Australia cannot be given to others for nothing anymore. It must be a Chinese country and white people will no longer be allowed to become the masters of Australia, otherwise they will be further exploited. Yuan Tian looked around at the capable generals and took a deep breath. We must fight against colonialism, and all our actions are just. We will not allow white people to oppress us and exploit us. Immediately surround the Australian capital and seize it with armed force. This battle can only be won, not lost. Yes, Commander. 003, Yellow Robe added, abolishing the Federation and establishing Australia and China. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. As the Commander in Chief of Australia, Yuan Tian holds 300,000 troops, 
and the Navy, land, and Air Force are modern and high-dot-quality troops. Within these three years, he was meticulous and had already developed an independent plan. And all the generals inside the military camp have been replaced with Chinese, meaning that all the Navy, land, and Air Forces are their own people. Now with a single command, the mutiny is in uproar, and the army has directly blocked the federal mansion. Before the people around could react, they saw various modern armies armed with firearms surrounding high-dot-level internal mansions such as Federal Commander Barton. Don't move. When all the special forces stormed into the mansion, Barton and the others were already pointed to their heads by the muzzle. The white guard at the door was either shot or surrendered obediently. When these armies broke into the internal meetings of Barton, they were all panicked. The leader, Barton, was a middle-dot-aged man with a big belly, with accumulated flesh on his face, a thick and short neck, and a head full of fat intestines. He widened his eyes, and after being shocked, there was already a dense cold sweat on his forehead, but he still pretended to be calm and maintained his dignity. Looking at Yuan Tian, he cursed loudly, Yuan Tian, do you know who your gun is pointing at? Are you referring to the governor of this country? Immediately lay down your weapons, otherwise I will hold you accountable like Her Majesty the Queen. After speaking, Barton stretched out his chubby neck and glared fiercely at Yuan Tian, with a fierce expression on his face. Barton originally planned to hold a meeting today to limit the power of Yuan Tian, the commander. In. Chief. As the federal governor, he is the one who truly possesses military power. Under no circumstances can the power of the general be handed over to these yellow-skinned people. He has a face of racial nobility, believing that they are the most noble race in the world. These yellow-skinned people were actually a disaster, but he never expected that as soon as he was about to exploit Yuan Tian's rights, he would be knocked upon by Yuan Tian. Upon hearing this, Yuan Tian remained silent and stared coldly at Barton. Even a single glance made Barton feel a bit creepy, like falling into an ice cellar. But he still suppressed his fear and continued to curse at the top of his lungs. Australia here is not the territory of your yellow-skinned people. You should roll back to Asia, roll back to Dragon Country. This is not where your yellow-skinned people should stay. Next second. Pop. A muffled sound came, and Chen Xingzhou took the gun handle and slapped Barton hard in the face. Ah! A mournful cry came, and Barton's face immediately flew straight with blood donation, his teeth falling to the ground. He couldn't stand the aloof expression of white people the most, and sneered. It's you who should get out of here, the Australian federal system will no longer exist in the future. And you, this fat pig, will be detained without restrictions by us in prison, ready for trial, and taken away. As soon as the words fell, the heavily armed soldiers were already displeased with the faces of these white people, and directly took Barton and other high-dot-level officials away like a pig, Yuan Tian, you bastard, the Kingdom of Britain will not spare you. You only have the chance to be happy now. Barton cursed and spat, but the blood in his mouth did not stop. But Yuan Tian just ignored it completely. In the future, they will be in charge here in Australia, and Britain will no longer be able to interfere in anything related to their country. After Yuan Tian completely occupied the Governor General's office and gained control of the Governor General, the military power in the entire Australia was fully grasped. The entire capital has entered a state of alert, and the surrounding citizens are still unaware of what has happened. Tanks and armored vehicles continue to enter the surrounding area, taking control. Today, a earth-shattering event will occur within Australia. Chen Xingzhou had already picked up the yellow robe he had prepared a few years ago and draped it over Yuan Tian's body, with a very obvious meaning. Wearing a yellow robe and embracing the emperor. They want to proclaim themselves emperor in Australia and truly dominate this country. Commander-in-chief, it was you who led Australia towards light, and it was only in a short period of time that the troops underwent tremendous changes. Now, the Chinese and troops in the entire state support you. Our identity cannot be that of a warlord, otherwise our words may not be accurate and our names may not be correct. 
Only by truly establishing a nation, unifying Australia, breaking away from Britain, and becoming a true country can we safeguard our interests. Chen Xingzhou understood that only when Yuan Tian became emperor, even if it was against the trend, he believed that only under Yuan Tian's leadership could Australia truly prosper and become strong. Only Chinese people can overthrow the oppression of white rule and truly become independent. Commander-in-chief, don't hesitate. Everyone is waiting for you. Our three years of hard work cannot be in vain. This is our Chinese territory. Another general, Lu Xianlong, also respectfully said. Only you can lead us and end the era of political power division. Only with one person's dictatorship can we truly centralize power and concentrate our efforts to accomplish great things. It won't cause a series of troubles due to the division of power. Commander-in-chief, please don't refuse. Take a step back, constitutional monarchy is also good. Obviously, these subordinates all planned to make Yuan Tian emperor, even if Yuan Tian had absolute power, they were willing to trust him. Yuan Tian had his own ideas for a long time, and as for the imperialism in feudal society, he did not follow that set, after all, that set will eventually have problems. Although centralization is not applicable to the interests of modern monarchs, constitutional monarchy is the best choice. Preserving the premise of monarchy, establishing a constitution to ensure people's sovereignty, limiting the rights of other monarchs, and realizing republican idealism. Although the king was partially restricted, he still held the highest power of the entire country. In a binary constitutional monarchy, the state power is jointly controlled by the monarch and parliament, and the monarch remains the center of power and the highest actual ruler, integrating legislative, administrative, judicial, and military powers. The parliament plays a restraining role on the monarch and is the advisory body of the monarch. The cabinet is the administrative authority of the monarch, and the prime minister is appointed by the monarch. The general is still appointed by the king, who is a binary monarchy and the highest head of the entire empire. However, in this form of government, although the state has also formulated a constitution and established a parliament, the monarch still maintains the authority of the feudal autocratic era. The king alone holds state power and is the center of power and the highest actual ruler. With the support of a group of generals and the people, after capturing the governor-general's office, Yuan Tian directly announced the abolition of the Commonwealth of Australia and the establishment of this Austro-Chinese Empire on October 10, 1937. The Austro-Chinese Empire uses this name to mean a country ruled by Australian Chinese. Even if Yuan Tian proclaimed himself emperor, he dared not have any carelessness. In the future, World War II will kick off, and this is a war that will sweep across the world, which no one can avoid. The Germanic Empire will soon flash at Bolin. And by abolishing the Commonwealth of Australia this time, it is certain that the British side will send people over. If they want to truly grasp power, they must face a challenge. 004, preparing to ascend the throne and proclaim oneself emperor, this belongs to us. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. After announcing the change to the Austro-Chinese Empire, it quickly received strong support from the Chinese people within the Austro-Chinese Empire, and a large number of supporters emerged. Originally, Chinese people were oppressed by white people in this colony, but now they can take charge of their own affairs. Who wouldn't want to? Besides, the Yuan family is genuinely doing things for the people, and no one would object. Moreover, the Yuan family has their own land and military power in Australia, and the local people are loyal to the Yuan family. After all, the Yuan family led the people to become prosperous, responsible for solving the local people's livelihood and economic problems, ensuring adequate food and clothing, and having no worries about medical education. Chinese people in other states simply do not receive this treatment. It is normal for the Yuan family to receive support and love from the people. The Yuan family has three loyal armies and can directly control the military power of the entire Australia. Basically, everyone is loyal. The Yuan family was originally Chinese, 
and fighting for their profits, combined with various factors, accounted for more than 50% of the population. Australia, which is all Chinese, definitely supports Yuan Tian. Even if Yuan Tian declared himself emperor and ruled alone, the entire Chinese community would agree, and everything would come naturally. Wearing a yellow robe, supporting Emperor Cheng, establishing the Austro-Chinese Empire, with the support of the Chinese people. Of course, Yuan Tian was also aware that when he established his country, it represented that he stood in opposition to Britain and Western colonial powers. But even if there are many obstacles, he will still overcome them and lead with a sword edge. As for the local white people in Europe, there was definitely opposition, but under the strong armed forces, the unrest quickly subsided. They either leave Australia or agree to Chinese rule over the country. Their opposition was only in vain, and after the establishment of the Austro-Chinese Empire, a constitutional monarchy was implemented. However, the Austro-Chinese Empire also had a parliament, including a cabinet and prime minister, all of whom were named directly by his monarch. All positions are dedicated to serving his monarch, and the selected personnel are naturally loyal to him. Moreover, the monarch has one veto power, which means they hold the highest power. The parliament only serves as an auxiliary government and cannot truly replace the monarch's power. The highest power remains in the hands of Yuan Tian, and the entire Australian army is directly assigned to the monarch. And Yuan Tian Lei was decisive and decisive, replacing all anti-China European white people within the cabinet, which was a magnificent transformation and inevitably led to bloodshed. As for the opposing European white people, their ultimate fate will only be in prison or without amnesty. Yuan Tian wants the whole of Australia to have the same heart, and no one will be allowed to act against the will of others. Being one's own person is the best decision, and a big purge has begun. At the same time, Yuan Tian is also preparing to plan a boarding ceremony and officially announce the establishment of the Austro-Chinese Empire. Secondly, over 100,000 troops were named by Yuan Tian as the Royal Army of the Austro-Chinese Empire, which was also a legitimate force under their command. It was also cultivated by the Yuan family. The three armies were all under their command, and the three commanders of the sea, land, and air were all his backbone. Yuan Tian looked at the three of them with a serious expression. Starting today, Army Commander-in-Chief Chen Xingzhou is responsible for managing the entire Australian Army force and defending our territory. Secondly, the Commander-in-Chief of the Air Force, Huang Shizhang, is responsible for the entire Air Force and does not allow any enemy aircraft to fly into our airspace. Finally, Lu Xianlong will serve as the Commander-in-Chief of the Navy. You three are responsible for the Australian military, and the safety of Australia is up to you. Yes, Your Majesty. With excitement on their faces, the three of them half knelt in front of Yuan Tian without hesitation and accepted the test. In their eyes, if Australia had Yuan Tian's leadership, it would surely lead to prosperity and prosperity. They want Chinese people to be the masters of their own country and truly control the power of Australia. Yuan Tian became a traveler and naturally knew the importance of maritime power. Only with a strong navy can Australia's sovereignty and maritime rights be safeguarded, and the ocean is a space for sustainable development in the future. The competition for maritime sovereignty is also a symbol of national strength, and it absolutely does not allow their navy to be weaker than other countries. And Britain will not stop here. In the future, Powerful warships or naval vessels will be sent to annihilate them and reclaim the colonies they believe they belong to. The current situation is heavy and the road ahead is long. Commander Liu, our Navy's current development is weak, but we must not slack off. In the future, we need to rely on the Navy to create a new world. We must guard our own home and the ownership of the ocean, and never give up to others. Your Majesty, rest assured that the naval strength will definitely develop. Any hostile warship that dares to approach our oceans will be annihilated with all our might. The Navy is Australia's most important military force, 
although they are a whole country and do not border with other countries, it does not mean that there is no external invasion. This is not only a natural defense, but also an opportunity for other countries to invade. Once the navy collapses, future coastal areas will be invaded, causing an economic blockade. And they must be careful of the powerful fleet of Britain, the navy must develop. Nowadays, relying on their coastline can indeed hinder certain enemies. But once other countries send warships to invade, they will have no resistance and must vigorously develop the navy, especially the embankment eagle sauce. At the same time, Yuan Tian has established six main departments. The Ministry of Economic Affairs is responsible for overseeing the economic development of the Austro-Chinese Empire, foreign trade, and the development of various sectors related to light and heavy industries. The Ministry of Military Industry, on the other hand, is a member of the Royal Army, responsible for manufacturing weapons and firearms. The Ministry of Resources is responsible for the classification and management of livestock resources, biological resources, mineral resources, and agricultural resources, including the economic benefits they bring. The Ministry of Education Development is also promoting their compulsory education, ensuring that the public can receive cultural knowledge, cultivate new talents, and implement a sustainable talent development strategy. The Ministry of Justice is responsible for compiling laws on the future of the Austro-Chinese Empire, ensuring the moral standards of citizens and sentencing based on legal standards, and playing a legislative and enforcement role. As for the Ministry of Health Management, it is responsible for the management of health and hygiene. Although the six departments have different management aspects, they also have intricate connections to ensure the rotation of the vast country of the Austro-Chinese Empire. Even if they drop a gear, it is very likely to cause their progress to stagnate. After the establishment of these six departments, the operation of Australia began. And Australia itself has abundant resources, known as the country on the mining cart, with abundant livestock and animal resources that have not yet been deeply exploited. Yuan Tian needs to fully utilize these resources for development, strengthen the country and benefit the people, and have a place to stand in future wars. Dignity only exists on the edge of the sword. Yuan Tian won't rely on others, but on himself. P.S. 100 flowers plus updates, 30 evaluation tickets plus updates, asking for flowers to collect, is anyone watching? More data directly explodes. 005, ascending the throne and proclaiming himself emperor, the royal army annihilates the white people. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. After Yuan Tian established the six major departments, the entire Austro-Chinese Empire began to operate, with orderly division of labor and various industries taking off. Because there is only one monarch, which is equivalent to having only one political party, the execution power can be imagined. These six major departments are like gears, and the Austro-Chinese Empire begins to rotate. The economy is developing rapidly in all aspects, and Chinese people are united. Even though these departments may not have been perfect at first, they are still sufficient for the current Qin state to operate. There is still room for improvement in the future, and the Austro-Chinese Empire has opened a new era. The Austro-Chinese Empire is now officially established, named after the Chinese people, representing their interests and unity. In the future, the Austro-Chinese Empire will not have any white interference and will truly belong to the Chinese people. Meanwhile, three days later, the coronation ceremony began under the watchful eyes of the masses, with many Chinese people gathered outside the venue in a grand manner to watch the Yuan family worship and wait for the new king to take office. The memorial center is bustling with lights and colorful decorations everywhere, yet it still maintains its dignity. There is a four-cornered green cauldron standing in the middle of the memorial, and three thumbs thick incense is slowly burning. Worshipping the heavens and the earth. A specialized ceremonial music unit began to play music. In this solemn atmosphere, Yuan Tian Nan was dressed in a yellow robe, with an embroidered dragon on his back and arms, and a crown on his sleeve that connected to the sky. The whole occasion was extremely serious, 
and a group of people followed behind Yuan Tian as a ceremony about the Austro-Chinese Empire began. The whole process may be a bit cumbersome, but it must be done, God bless the empire. Although the Austro-Chinese Empire was a constitutional monarchy, it was similar to the worship of Yuan Tian's ancestors, which also represented that they were protected by heaven and earth. Following that, Yuan Tian Bai bowed three times and announced. In the future, the Ottoman Empire will establish its capital in Kampe and officially establish a nation. God bless the empire, and we hope that everything will go smoothly in the future. Yuan Tian and the officials bowed again. Although man can conquer nature, the procedures that should be followed still need to be followed. Soon, the sacrificial ceremony for heaven had come to an end, and the usual discussion of national calamity was within the former governor general's office. Nowadays, this place has also become an important place for them to discuss important political conferences. After a simple renovation, it was named the Aohua Palace. However, the future must be further safeguarded. The dignity of their monarch's place of residence cannot be lost, and receiving envoys from other countries in the future will also lose face. As a king, Yuan Tianzi met with the public and officials inside the Aohua Palace to discuss future major losses. After the coronation ceremony, the Austro-Chinese Empire will be officially established and its capital will be Kampei. And this year is also known as the first year of Aohua, representing the beginning of a new era. Yuan Tian's palace has been temporarily located within the presidential palace, and he has been working tirelessly. After becoming a monarch, there were many things that Yuan Tian needed to handle, including the formulation of the constitution and the strategic policies of the future empire. Including how to deal with the upcoming World War II and the British conquest, these are all their plans. If there is a slight mistake, they are likely to fall into an irreversible situation, even the system cannot be omnipotent. Inside the Aohua Palace, Chen Xingzhou quickly approached Yuan Tian to report on the recent situation. Your Majesty, currently the people of the Empire are in peace and stability, and all Chinese people support and love you, willing to be under your command and protection. However, although there are still some white European forces who want to resist and small dot scale conflicts have erupted, they have been completely annihilated by our royal special forces. As for the antagonistic forces in various regions, they can no longer stir up any waves and are all under our control. Chen Xingzhou had a smile on his face, and military power was in his hands. Even if these white people wanted to cause trouble, they were just eating peanuts. As for the Chinese side, they are definitely willing to make the Yuan family a monarch and support Yuan Tian, as they have been exploited and oppressed by white people before. The supremacy of white race also brings about the Sodot called inexplicable pride, which naturally prevents them from being restrained by the Chinese. They believe that Australia belongs to their territory, and the yellow race should be under their jurisdiction. They are the true masters of this place. The times have changed, and now Yi Tian is not used to them. To resist foreign aggression, we must first stabilize the internal political power. If anyone dares to resist, annihilate them all. Upon hearing this, Yuan Tian knew it was just a small incident, gaining military power and suppressing internal resistance from white people was an easy task. These were just minor matters. The crisis they are facing comes from the impact of World War II. This war affected the entire world and subsequently sparked a war of an era. Commander Chen, continue to observe the international situation and report any situation to me. At the same time, we need to accelerate local production, manufacture firearms, ensure our military strength, and pay attention to Britain's every move. Now that World War II is about to break out, their internal preparations are not yet sufficient. Three years of planning is not enough to become independent in this war that affects the whole world. And they also have to face British warships at present. In this era, British warships can be said to be invincible, without any opponents. He is undoubtedly a sea hegemon. Now that they have established their country and officially separated from Britain, they will definitely be hit and burdened by their country in the future. 
they will never allow their desired colony to become independent, simply a matter of profit. Yuan Tian understood that they must accelerate their pace. A current army of 300,000 is definitely not enough to cope with the current crisis. In the future, they will lead Australia, accelerate military construction, and are expected to require over a million troops to face this brutal war. Chen Xingzhou seemed to see Yuan Tian's concerns, but confidently responded. Your Majesty, with your leadership, we will definitely overcome numerous difficulties and laugh until the end. After all, Yuan Tian is the monarch they sincerely support, possessing strong leadership charm and foresight that ordinary people cannot see, as if he can see through the future. Otherwise, he would not have received the support of the Australian people or a general. In his opinion, as long as there is Yuan Tian, the backbone, still present. Even if there is a global war crisis in the future, Australia can still stand firm. Yuan Tian nodded and said, I'm worried. The soldiers will come and block it. The water will come and the earth will cover it. I will take your shawl to cut thorns. After speaking, Yuan Tian was full of confidence and asked Chen Xingzhou to continue monitoring the situation in Britain and the world, while also arranging to accelerate the production of weapons and recruit personnel. They have two military factories in total, and currently the production of firearms and ammunition is not enough to support the war. Once in battle, these ammunition won't last long, but at the same time, be wary of eagle sauce. The reason why Eagle Sauce was able to rise rapidly during World War II was also through selling weapons, and they will not miss this opportunity to rise. P.S. 100 Flowers Plus Updates, 30 Evaluation Tickets Plus Updates, Asking for Flowers to Collect, Is Anyone Watching? 006, Construction of Navy Ahua Class Battleships From You are listening at NovelFull.audio after the establishment of the Austro-Chinese Empire, the news was only received in Britain a few days later. After all, in this era, there were no telephones or various convenient communication devices, so when they received the message, Yuan Tian had already completed the internal rectification. The coronation ceremony has already ended, and this news has caused a stir within Britain. They never expected that one of their colonies would be usurped and rebelled, how could they bear it? In their view, the reason why Britain can enjoy these riches and maintain internal stability. It is because they engage in external wars and plunder all external resources and wealth to supply and demand internal resources, which is the treasure they value. Now that it has been plundered, how could it be possible to hand over this precious land to others? The Queen of Britain immediately announced publicly. Dear people, our land has been brutally invaded by the Huangpi people, who have acted recklessly, stripped us of our rights, and even established the Austro-Chinese Empire to confront us. This is an extremely foolish and barbaric behavior, and I cannot tolerate these local authorities struggle for our rights. In the future, we in Britain will conquer and take back Australia, which is our land. The Queen of Britain has no intention of giving up. This piece of land in Australia is a new continent for them. The unexplored resources are quite abundant, but they are much larger than their mainland area in Britain. How could the yellow-skinned people who have emerged now want them to end colonial rule? Western countries do everything for their own profit, how could they give up this land? In the future, they will dispatch warships to suppress the Austro-Chinese Empire. There is already a simple setup within Aohua, and Yuan Tian has moved various documents and materials here, forming a simple office space. Although it may be a bit rudimentary, the empire has just been established and everything is thriving. Yuan Tian is not particularly strict about the office environment. At this moment, a sound of footsteps came from outside the door, and Chen Xingzhou strode over with a gloomy expression. He respectfully reported. Your Majesty, there has indeed been a response from the British side. They will not recognize the existence of our Austro-Chinese Empire and have planned to send troops to suppress it. I'm afraid troops will be deployed during this period. They still have some understanding of the power of Britain, as warships and various industries have surpassed them. During the Industrial Revolution, 
Britain was far ahead in the world. Upon hearing this, Yuan Tian was not surprised, he just smiled. The reaction of the Queen of Britain was quite fierce, but Australia is quite far from Britain, and I'm afraid their warships will be coming for a while. During World War II, the speed of these warships would not have been so fast. When Britain attacked them, they were idle and waiting for trouble. Now we can also have sufficient preparation, and soon the Germans will flash at Poland, and the entire Europe will be involved in this battlefield. At that time, they wouldn't have the time to manage them, even in a sit-in battle, they wouldn't dare to send warships to distant Australia at will. They still have some time to develop their own power. Yuan Tian is aware that due to geographical location, Australia is thousands of miles away from Europe and Asia, and it is basically difficult for warships to come over. Yuan Tian knew that this was not a worry-free situation. In the future, Japan would attack the Pacific and launch some large dot-scale naval battles against them. No country can be spared from this war, and the flames of war will spread throughout the world. Later, Yuan Tian continued to arrange. Continuing to observe international trends, this war will affect the whole world. Chen Xingzhou's face was solemn and he nodded. He felt that their enemy was not only Britain, but also a precursor to a storm. However, they also believe that as long as His Majesty is present, they will lead them towards the dawn. After Chen Xingzhou left, Yi Tian squinted his eyes as they were about to face the challenge of a naval war. After ascending to the throne as the ruler, the Divine Level Black Technology System also rewarded him. Obtained design drawings for Omaha-class light cruisers, Baltimore-class heavy cruisers, and Ava-class battleships. Don't just look at the design drawings, this is countless wisdom and hard work, and it is also their strongest means in Australia at present. Especially the Ava-class battleships, which can be said to be the strongest battleships during World War II. It is also the battleship with the longest hull, the highest main engine power, and the highest speed, reaching 33 knots, at the time of World War II. Once built, it is definitely a maritime hegemon. Yi Tian plans to carry out the manufacturing plan of the Ahua-class battleship, which will become their steel giant sailing on the sea in Australia in the future. Soon, Yuan Tian would shout over the Minister of Military Industry, Zhou Hailin, and the Commander-in-Chief of the Navy, Lu Xianlong. Your Majesty, are you looking for me? The two of them approached Yuan Tian and bowed. Yuan Tian didn't say anything nonsense, waved his hand, and handed a box of information and drawings behind him to Zhou Hailin and Lu Xianlong. This is the blueprint for the battleship. In the future, we in Australia will build our own warship. This will be listed as a confidential plan and must be carried out in secret. A battleship. In an instant, Zhou Hailin and Lu Xianlong looked at each other in disbelief. Is this a battleship? After flipping through the densely packed blueprint, the two of them couldn't help but be drawn in by the blueprint. They were shocked and opened their mouths wide, revealing a lost expression. If it weren't for Yi Tian in front of them, they would almost have shouted and yelled. The blueprint of this battleship showed them His Majesty's wild vision, it is definitely a real steel giant. Your Majesty, this blueprint has simply made up for the shortcomings of our navy. The captain of the Ahua class reached 270.4 meters, with a width of 33 meters. The main gun used was a lightweight 7 Malawi and Quacha's 406 mm 50x caliber main gun, with a maximum range of 42 km and a firing rate of 2 rounds per minute. In this era, caliber and artillery were absolute justice, and the Ava class battleships made them feel like they had seen a new continent. Your Majesty, if this battleship is manufactured, the resources required would be astronomical, and although these drawings are detailed, they are too complex. We need to study them for a period of time. But we will quickly interpret this blueprint to ensure the successful manufacture of the battleship. Although Australia is rich in resources, building battleships also requires the research of these military experts, but it is estimated that it will take them a long time to explore and build them. This is one of the most impressive products of modernization, 
and once created, Australia truly stands undefeated. Zhou Hailin now wants to leave holding the blueprint. Your Majesty, rest assured that with this blueprint, we estimate that we will be able to create it soon. This is definitely a way to make up for the shortcomings of the Navy. Lu Xianlong understands that this blueprint will be the key to the rise of their Australian Navy. Yuan Tian nodded. Well, you should accelerate the speed and manufacture the battleship as soon as possible. The first goal is to report directly on what resources are needed. Yes, Your Majesty. At present, Australia has abundant natural resources, especially iron ore, aluminum ore, tin ore, and other resources that can be mined, so the raw materials for manufacturing battleships are still sufficient. P.S. 100 flowers plus updates, 30 review tickets plus updates, is anyone watching? Seeking flowers for collection, the author will accelerate the update and seek data support. 007 the Austro-Chinese Empire conscripts one million soldiers to take over the Dragon Kingdom. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. After the establishment of the Austro-Chinese Empire, it was already conducting economic development in an orderly manner, while also expanding its military, recruiting troops, and promoting military growth. Yuan Tian knew that there were not many opportunities for them to develop their economy now, and every minute and second should not be missed, so that they could protect themselves in the wave of World War II in the future. Three days later, Minister of Intelligence Chen Xingzhou arrived inside the Aohua Palace and reported the intelligence to Yuan Tian. Your Majesty, since we announced the establishment of the Austro-Chinese Empire, the British troops stationed in New Zealand have begun to take action, probably to suppress us. At the moment when the Austro-Chinese Empire was founded, it was clear to everyone that the future of the Austro-Chinese Empire would face a powerful British imperial warship campaign. However, even so, with the leadership of His Majesty Yuan Tian, they will still ride the wind and waves. If they can't talk, then they will fight. They only believe in the weapons in their hands and cannot give sovereignty to other countries. Yuan Tianka only believes in one truth, which is that having a big fist is the hard truth. Not only that, Your Majesty, in the future, the New Zealand Garrison Navy will come over, and I'm afraid this will be a downward pressure. Chen Xingzhou also smiled as he spoke. Currently, the development speed of the Austro-Chinese Empire has made rapid progress. Although the Navy is not well dot developed, it still has 50,000 troops, which should not be underestimated. Do Britain really think they were the indigenous people of Australia in the past and had no resistance? After receiving this intelligence, Yuan Tian gently looked at the table with a smile on his face. Does the British Empire really think that the place where the sun shines is their territory? New Zealand is just an island, and even if their navy can come up, it's a problem. The key terrain was advantageous to them, and before the British warships could approach, they were directly shattered by their cannons. Yuan Tian waved his hand indifferently and said, Commander Chen, there's no need to care so much. We'll talk about it when they really come. However, it is still necessary to closely monitor the movements of the New Zealand Garrison Navy. Yes, Your Majesty. Chen Xingzhou stood tall, and under His Majesty's leadership, their navy also had absolute confidence. And Yuan Tian is not worried about future naval battles. Once the battleship is manufactured, the surrounding waters will become their dominant position. By the way, how was the recent conscription result? The military strength is the important link to maintain national security, and their 300,000 troops are far from enough, at least expanding to 1 million troops. Upon hearing this, Chen Xingzhou frowned and said, Your Majesty, we are currently facing difficulties in conscription, and there are not many people willing to sign up. The proportion of young and middle-aged people in the population is too small. We cannot recruit many capable soldiers, and currently our Chinese population is only 5 million. The rest are foreigners, and their enthusiasm to join the army is not high. The population of Australia is still not enough, and it is not possible for women and children to be all soldiers. 
the difficulty of conscripting one million soldiers is indeed somewhat difficult. The total population of the Austro-Chinese Empire was only 10 million, and one million soldiers, or one-tenth of the population, had to join the army, which was indeed quite difficult. After a moment of silence, Yuan Tian sighed and said, the population problem is something we must solve, we need to increase population growth. However, it is also impossible to actually recruit one-tenth of the population, and various situations may arise in the development of their empire. The key is that a country has not even talked about development, and the most basic national policy is to develop its population, which is also a fundamental element for the country's growth foundation. Without economic development accounting for the population, it is definitely impossible to expand the military's establishment. After a moment of contemplation, Yuan Tian came up with a policy. It is impossible to expect white people to join the military. Currently, we must rely on immigration, population migration plans, and recruiting Chinese in other countries. Your Majesty, are you referring to the Dragon Kingdom? Chen Xingzhou pondered for a moment and realized that the only place with a large number of Chinese people was the Dragon Kingdom. Not bad, most of our ancestors' people came from China. Nowadays, there are continuous internal wars in China, and the people have been exposed to tea poisoning. We can immigrate from Dragon Country and accept these homeless refugees. And if we go by sea, the two regions are not far apart. The Dragon Kingdom and the Austro-Chinese Empire are not actually very far away. If the refugees who suffered in the Dragon Kingdom were transferred to the Austro-Chinese Empire, it could quickly increase their population. There are quite a few refugees in the Dragon Kingdom, at least able to accommodate tens of millions of refugees and expand their population. Chen Xingzhou's eyes lit up and he said, Your Majesty, that's a great idea. Our ancestors also drifted from Southeast Asia to Australia, maybe we can really accept these refugees. Their ancestors have been living in the Dragon Kingdom for generations, knowing that there is a large population there. However, after the outbreak of the anti-Japanese war, nearly hundreds of millions of refugees were displaced, which was an opportunity for their Austro-Chinese Empire to rise. The Austro-Chinese Empire could increase their population by guiding and accepting these refugees. Moreover, the people of the Dragon Kingdom communicate with them in terms of language, culture, and beliefs. In the future, it will expand the population of their Austro-Chinese Empire, which is definitely a good thing. This will not cause these refugees to die in the war, especially since Australia now has vast resources, a suitable climate, and any industry can develop. Even animal husbandry can achieve rapid development. Commander Chen, you should immediately accept the refugees from the Dragon Kingdom. Since they share the same roots and origins as our ancestors, we will not let the war continue to affect them. This is Yuan Tian's population immigration plan. As long as Chinese people can come here, they can be allocated fertile land, have a comfortable environment for living and working, and be far away from the turmoil of war. Who wouldn't want it? As soon as Chen Xingzhou spoke, his face turned respectful and he said, Your Majesty, rest assured that I will definitely complete the population migration plan. Okay, not only do we need to absorb the population of Dragon Country, but we also need to absorb it from Southeast Asia. Currently, our population of 10 million is not enough to support the development of the empire. Their main target audience is Chinese, and they don't want to bring in these foreigners or black devils anymore. They are not of our own race, and their hearts will always be different. This is a truth that everyone understands. Five million Chinese are really too few, they want to expand their population, and this plan is named the Butterfly Plan. It means they are like butterflies, beautiful and resilient, traveling up to 45,000 kilometers through mountains and rivers, and reaching their destination in a few months. This time they need to make a migration plan, introduce refugees from Dragon Country, enter the Austro-Chinese Empire, increase population, and expand the development efforts of the Austro-Chinese Empire. Without a population, everything is in vain. Although Australia's land is indeed smaller than Dragon Country, it is still enough to accommodate these refugees, 
and they have more than enough resources allocated to them. P.S. Updated to 30 evaluation votes, flowers for collection, 100 flowers for updates, 30 evaluation votes, continue to update with data support. 008. The Monarch Inspects the Army, Increases Iron Ore and You are listening at NovelFull.audio After the coronation ceremony, Yuan Tian also dealt with many things, and population migration was handed over to Chen Xingzhou for handling. Secondly, the most important thing at present is to reserve military forces and build weapons and equipment. He didn't expect that the royal army he recruited had no weapons to use, guns in hand, confidence in his heart, and the ability to cope with all changes. Soon, accompanied by Minister of Military Industry Lu Yi, Yuan Tian inspected the military factory and also came to inspect the production status of tanks. Minister of War Industry Lu Yi said with a smile on his face, Your Majesty, currently our Royal Army mainly owns Tiger Tanks and Tiger King Tanks, which are also the trump cards of our Royal Army. After speaking, Lu Yi took Yuan Tian on a tour of the already manufactured tanks. There were already built Tiger Tanks inside the military warehouse, which were then displayed in front of Yuan Tian. And their Austro-Chinese Empire has already manufactured the first batch of 50 vehicles, and will mass-produce even more in the future. The original intention of the design of the Tiger Tank is that the artillery has greater performance in penetrating enemy tanks, and the tank itself has thick protective armor that the enemy cannot penetrate, with a maximum speed of no less than 60 km per hour. The entire Tiger King heavy tank battle weighs 69.8 tons, with a crew of five people. It adopts a tilted armor design and is equipped with an 88mm caliber tank gun. Driven by a 690 horsepower gasoline engine with outstanding protective firepower, but slightly inferior maneuverability. Your Majesty, the armor thickness of the tank has significantly increased compared to ordinary tanks. The equivalent thickness of the front armor of the tank, which is 150mm and inclined at 40 degrees, exceeds 220mm. At present, no tank gun internationally can directly penetrate its armor, and we have installed an 88mm caliber KWK 4388L-71 tank gun with a muzzle brake, which will cause a huge impact on medium-dot-sized tanks. Lu Yi straightened his chest, and this Tiger tank was definitely their trump card. It was undoubtedly the king of land warfare in the battlefield. Yuan Tian also nodded in satisfaction knowing that the current Tiger tank, apart from having some shortcomings in power, outperformed tanks from other countries in terms of armor and firepower. Can effectively enhance the current combat power of their royal army. So what is the current tank production? 50 tanks alone is not enough. If we want to fight a war of annihilation, the number of tanks should be at least 5 to 600 or more. Lu Yi let out a bitter smile and sighed, Your Majesty, the production of Tiger tanks is still relatively low, with only over 100 units produced in a month. Yuan Tian frowned as there was not much time left. If World War II broke out, the entire world would be affected by the war, and they had to accelerate the production capacity of tanks. He looked serious and said, Lu Yi, I don't care what you think. I only focus on the results and must accelerate the production capacity, at least by several times or more. It should be noted that future World War II requires both production capacity and tank-led warfare, with at least several times more production capacity to be increased. Upon hearing this, Louis pondered for a moment and shook his head, saying, Your Majesty, currently our mineral resources for manufacturing tanks are not sufficient. I'm afraid even with such production capacity, we won't be able to carry out resource development. The main tanks require a large amount of iron ore and composite armor to be able to retreat fully in the midst of gunfire, not only iron ore, but also gasoline. At present, their resources are indeed insufficient. Yuan Tian said, don't worry about resources. Australia is rich in mineral resources and also has abundant oil and natural gas. Accelerating production progress is your current top priority. In the future, I will order the Ministry of Resources to continue exploration and further develop resources throughout Australia. 
you should know that Australia is known as a country on the mining cart, and naturally does not lack resources. The entire Australia has abundant mineral resources, especially iron ore and pyrite. Mining is simple and convenient, so it should not be a problem. To manufacture tanks, the armor, shell, and tracks are all made of iron ore, which requires a large amount of ore. Secondly, their production of 105mm howitzers and M4 self-propelled artillery must also be increased, and the production efficiency of military trucks, AK-47 rifle bullets, and other items must be fully utilized. Other military factories also need to expand, increase production capacity, increase their production capacity, and must produce weapons and equipment 24 hours a day without interruption. Except for the equipment required by these royal troops, the rest is stored in military bases for preparation. All of their weapons and equipment must be produced, whether it is ammunition or artillery, to achieve mass production. And Yuan Tian's intention is to carry out strategic reserves, not only to expand the scale of military factories, but also to increase the available weapons, equipment, and ammunition in their hands. Ensure that they have surplus weapons anytime and anywhere, and in this era, there is no shortage of weapons produced. Lu Yi was stunned. With the current production capacity of weapons, it is likely that they have already been used by the Austro-Chinese Empire. Is producing so many weapons not just to defend Australia and defeat the invasion of Britain? Does your majesty have greater ambition? Thinking of this, Louis couldn't help but take a deep breath and couldn't help but ask. Your Majesty, if we produce so many weapons, will there be no place for them to be used? After all, they currently produce a lot of weapons, which are difficult to handle when stacked up. As soon as these words were spoken, Yuan Tian smiled. Don't worry, even if we don't need these weapons, we can still sell them. You should know that during World War II, Eagle Sauce made a fortune by producing weapons and selling them to other countries. Even World War II did not affect Eagle Sauce, but instead allowed them to make a fortune through the arms business, which was also what they wanted to do. So while Yuan Tian planned to protect the Austro-Chinese Empire, he also planned to produce these weapons, so that he could make a fortune directly through military weapons. Yes, Your Majesty, I will expand my military scale and prepare well for military operations in the future. Louis always felt that His Majesty's ambition was not small, but His Majesty's foresight and foresight were beyond his ability to speculate. Now Yuan Tianfen instructs him to enter and prepare whatever he wants, Your Majesty will not be wrong. After Yuan Tian inspected and inspected the military factory, he asked them to carry out the production capacity and construction of the military factory, increase the production volume of weapons and equipment, and the productivity must be increased. At the same time, after the establishment of the Austro-Chinese Empire, these places were still states, with six states and two regions established. For New South Wales, Queens, South Australia, Tasmania, Victoria, and Western Australia. The Capital Territory and Northern Territory consist of eight parts, excluding other islands, with a vast area and easy management of differentiated regions. As for the previous name, it has also been replaced, and the location of New South Wales has abundant mineral resources, including various types of metal ores. Yuan Tian also urged the Ministry of Resources to increase its mining efforts, otherwise it would not be enough for the current production needs. P.S. Add updates, add updates for 100 flowers, add updates for 30 review votes, and continue to seek flowers for collection and updates. 009. Vigorously developing the Navy and Air Force, and receiving the day. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. After visiting the military factory, Yuan Tian rushed to the Air Force base without stopping, and this time he was welcomed by Air Force Commander Huang Shizhang. After arriving at the Air Force Base, upon seeing it, there were rows of assembly lines that had already begun to take shape. And in the warehouse, there are P-51 Mustang fighter jets and B-29 bombers. The B-29 bomber was the main bomber of World War II and is currently the largest aircraft in scale, capable of carrying out strategic and long-dot-range bombing missions. 
It can even be used as an anti-submarine reconnaissance and aerial refueling aircraft, definitely a super aerial fortress. B-29 bombers typically operate at altitudes close to 10,000 meters, with a total length of 30 meters and a staggering wingspan of 45 meters. The B-29 bomber is definitely one of the most impressive achievements in World War II history. This is also because the system drawings were rewarded, otherwise it would have been decades before the Austro-Chinese Empire wanted to develop such a fighter jet. Commander Huan, how many P-51 Mustang fighter jets and B-29 bombers are currently in service? As soon as Huang Shizhang said this, he pondered and provided a clear data. Currently, there are a total of 213 Mustang fighter jets and only 120 B-29 bombers due to immature technology and difficulty in producing B-29 bombers, at present, our total bomber production capacity is probably only 30.40 planes per month. As soon as these words were spoken, Yuan Tian frowned, realizing that there were still not enough fighter jets with over 300 now. You should know that at that time, there were over 2,000 B-29 bombers in the country of Ingjiang, which can be imagined to be terrifying. The current number of fighter jets in Australia and China would be powerless in the face of airstrikes. Not only that, the Little Devils will also launch the Pacific War, and after attacking Eagle Sauce, it will be their country of Australia and China. Moreover, during this period in the Pacific, Little Devil's naval aviation team will cause over a hundred airstrikes on the land of the Austro-Chinese Empire. Not only will it destroy your military base, but it will also harm innocent civilians. Yuan Tian learned that the most devastating bombing of Australia and China by the Little Devils resulted in the deaths of over 7,000 soldiers and civilians, which can be imagined as their madness. Moreover, the important geographical location here is also known as the Gateway to Asia, and it is impossible for the Little Devils to give up. Although it has to be admitted, the Little Devil Zero fighter jet has a strong power and is the sharpest batch of fighter jets today, with greater destructive power. Later, Yuan Tian spoke seriously and said, Commander Huang, we must manufacture more planes, at least a thousand or more. No matter what method you think, even if it's just selling iron, the number and production capacity of planes must be increased. This is currently the top priority. If you are lacking anything, just put it bluntly. The least scarce thing in Australia is resources. Yes, your majesty. Huang Shi bowed and felt the urgency conveyed by his majesty's words. I'm afraid your majesty will face the threat from Britain, and there may be other threats approaching faintly. Otherwise, with their current state of readiness, they would be more than enough to face an attack from Britain. And all that Yuan Tian did was to cope with future wars, as Little Devil's Zero fighter jet was very strong. So they must have control over the air, otherwise modern air defense methods cannot prevent the invasion of the Japanese Zero fighter jets. At that time, they will be the fish and meat slaughtered by the people on the chopping board. In history, the Little Devils also bombed the port of Darwin, which is the gateway to Asia, in the fourth or second year. This military port is extremely important. If they are attacked and bombed, their large reserves of supplies will be destroyed in the future, and they will lose a lot of combat effectiveness. Moreover, at that time, the anti-aircraft weapon at the base, the 20mm anti-aircraft gun, had little effect on Little Devil's Zero fighter jet. The Little Devils not only raided Darwin's military port, but also carried out indiscriminate bombing of Darwin City, resulting in the deaths of civilians who had not evacuated. Nowadays, the Austro-Chinese Empire is his territory, and historical tragedies are absolutely not allowed to happen again. He cannot watch the Little Devils air raid their territory. To cause casualties to their Chinese people, it is necessary to accelerate the production of Air Force fighter jets. Yuan Tian knew that time was already very tight, and there were only a few years left for the development of the entire Austro-Chinese Empire. At the same time, he also needed to strengthen the construction of anti-aircraft guns in military ports and other areas. Not only should we increase the number of air forces and fighter jets, occupy air power, but on the other hand, 
air defense equipment should also be fully prepared to prevent enemy airstrikes to the greatest extent possible. For Yuan Tian, who had traveled through time, although he had not been subjected to any airstrikes. But the piercing and nervous sound of prevention and control warnings, as well as the buzzing sound of airplanes, were hard to forget in his mind. Even if one has not experienced an air raid, they are aware of the despair and terror it brings. The industrial machinery of the Austro-Chinese Empire had to be put into operation. After inspecting the air force, Yuan Tian transferred to the Royal Shipyard. At present, the Royal Shipyard only produces a dozen or so warships, which cannot meet the needs of Australia, despite its long coastline. But it is still surrounded by the sea on three sides, so there are much more military facilities and ports to be deployed than other countries. Secondly, the number and tonnage of these warships are not large enough. The order issued by Yuan Tian to Navy Commander Lu Xianlong. What we need to build in the future is a strategic ship of tens of thousands of tons. The Ahua-class battleships must be scheduled in advance, and light cruisers must also be produced. Yuan Tianxia gave a death order that the production of the Ahua-class warships must be accelerated, which is related to future maritime wars with the Little Devils. The warships of the Little Devils, especially the Yamato warships and other heavyweight Fusang fighters, are the existence of steel fortresses at sea. Their geographical location is surrounded by the sea on three sides, and the development of the navy is inevitable. As soon as he spoke, Lu Xianlong gave a bitter smile and said, Your Majesty, we have accelerated the progress and worked overtime to improve the manufacturing of the ships. However, the drawings are complex and difficult to understand. Currently, the speed of manufacturing submarines is limited, mainly because there are not enough engineers and scientists to share the pressure. It should be noted that analyzing blueprints requires a large amount of manpower and deduction. It is not enough to build a ship solely based on blueprints, but rather to consider all aspects. Nowadays, their production speed is not fast enough, which is due to a shortage of talents. As soon as he spoke, Yuan Tian sighed. The importance of scientists can even salvage a failed war. Lack of talent is actually a problem. Chinese scientists in the Austro-Chinese Empire had limited exposure to Western civilization and had limited available resources. Moreover, coupled with the resistance of some white people, their engineers and scientists pale in comparison to other countries. P.S. Updated to 100 flowers plus updates, 30 review tickets plus updates. Is anyone watching? Seeking flowers and collecting them. 010, truncated eagle sauce, obtained by German scientists. You are listening at novel full dot audio. Although Yuan Tian understands that there is a system, the lack of talent is a hard injury and cannot be compensated for. Even if the system provides the drawings, he may not be able to manufacture them. Talents are also important strategic resources, promoting the country through science and education, and strengthening the country through talent. What the Austro-Chinese Empire is currently lacking is a large number of elite talents. After Yuan Tian's inspection of the three armies is over, he is indeed somewhat troubled. After returning to the Aohua Palace, I frowned. At present, there are less than a hundred top-notch scientific talents in the Austro-Chinese Empire, which is a high dot level talent that is difficult to screen out for over 10 million people. At present, the lack of senior talents among them is indeed an important issue, but he has already ordered the entire Austro Chinese Empire to implement free education while being exposed to advanced Western culture. All education from primary school to university is free, advocating the cultivation of talents. Even if this portion of resources is indeed lost, it must be implemented. In the future, their talents will not have a gap in the middle, and at the same time, Yuan Tian not only established a school, but also established a military academy for the navy, land, and air. The Ministry of Education is composed of military academies such as the Army Military Academy, the Air Force Military Academy, and the Naval 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 Military Academy, most of which train non-commissioned officers for future warfare. To ensure that they can become excellent commanders and soldiers on the front line, 
everything they do is also to increase the survival rate of these people in real wars. Not only that, but also the higher education departments of numerous universities such as the Austro-Chinese Imperial University of Technology and the University of Melbourne have been established, with the intention of approaching and pioneering new fields of research and culture. Only technology is the primary productive force. With the development of technology, all production can be easily solved. But Yuan Tian frowned. Cultivating talents is like planting trees. Ten years of education, a hundred years of education, the birth of talents cannot be achieved overnight. And it requires accumulation and cultivation, as well as a lot of time and management. Even geniuses need to be exposed to this type of knowledge, and now we still need to dig people. Although Yuan Tian ordered the establishment of a research institute before, it was still not enough to start recruiting talents. Yuan Tian quickly called over the trusted minister of the intelligence bureau, Zhang Yihang, who was responsible for managing external intelligence and collecting the latest news from other countries. Your Majesty, you are looking for me. Zhang Yihan bowed slightly with a respectful expression. Director Zhang, you are also aware of the current situation in our country of Australia and China. With our current high.n talents and technological level, we are unable to accelerate the research and development progress and production capacity of the Navy, land, and Air Force. These talents are not enough to break through the existing technological production capacity. We will definitely need a large number of high.n talents in the future, so I need you to explore and recruit new talents. Upon hearing this, Zhang Yihang paused and said, Your Majesty, we have already recruited all the high.level talents that Australia and China can recruit. I'm afraid there are not many available talents in China at present. Now he is also powerless, mainly because the talent within Australia and China has already been recruited, and he cannot be born out of thin air. Yuan Tian waved his hand and also saw Zhang Yihang's difficulty. It's not just about recruiting talents within our country, Australia and China. I hope you can go to Germany and Germany to recruit talents. Especially Jewish scientists, the focus is on excavation. Although Yuan Tian did not name himself by name, he still hoped to uncover the important scientist. Secondly, the Germanic Empire is about to go to war, and there must be chaos inside. Perhaps they really have a chance to explore. Now we have abundant resources and financial resources in Australia and China, as long as these Jewish scientists are willing to come to our country for research. We will ensure to approve him with a large amount of funds and benefits, without causing them to worry about their research. As soon as these words were spoken, Zhang Yihang was stunned. The Germanic Kingdom. That is indeed a great country with abundant talents. If scientists can be recruited from there, it can also make up for the shortage of high end talents in the current Austro-Chinese Empire. Yuan Tian also knew that they had to cut off the Huang sauce country, and these people dug up ahead of time. Moreover, the reason why the Germanic countries dared to launch the Second World War was because they had strong talents and technology groups, which was also their confidence. This must be done by poaching these people in advance, and Little Beard will soon persecute these Jews. Top scientists such as Heisenberg, Turing, and Einstein can all recruit them. They can serve as researchers for the Austro-Chinese Empire, and this group of most outstanding scientists are basically elite personnel in various fields, even standing at the top of science and technology, absolutely leading the way. Especially in the fields of mechanics and rocket aerospace, if these people can be excavated, they can compete in advance for talent in Eagle Sauce Country. So in the future, their technological level in all aspects can advance by leaps and bounds, and now he is going to cut them off. And the famous paperclip operation of Eagle Sauce Country allowed a large number of scientists from the Germanic and European countries to enter their free countries, so after World War II, Eagle Sauce Country was the most powerful country. They plan to break the plan of Eagle Sauce Country in advance, and some scientists will recruit their subordinates. After Zhang Yihang realized it, his face showed excitement and he said, Your Majesty, you have really shown me a clear path. European countries were constantly in turmoil, 
and after the first defeat of the Germanic Empire, these victorious countries could be said to be crazily exploiting the Germanic Empire. Their internal talent survival is a problem, let alone conducting research. Your Majesty, if we can offer generous terms, we can definitely attract these talents. Yuan Tian nodded. The Germanic Empire had already begun to persecute Jews, and they were able to recruit these scientists in advance. Even if they didn't come, Australia and China could still do two things. I plan to respond to these scientists when they truly encounter danger. By the way, it can also recruit refugees. After the war, Germanic countries also had a large number of refugees, which could be used to expand manpower. This is Yuan Tian's plan to transfer these refugees and high.n talents to the Austro-Chinese Empire, especially since Little Beard has long been persecuting Jews. I believe Jews will definitely be willing to come to the Austro-Chinese Empire. Yes, Your Majesty, I will immediately go and organize these refugees to seek refuge in our Austro-Chinese Empire. I believe these Jewish-level scientists will also visit our Austro-Chinese Empire as guests. It should be noted that Little Beard began persecuting Jews in 1933 and reached its peak in 1938, during which time the lower echelons of the Jewish community were not doing well. If Australia is willing to accept them, it can also obtain a large amount of talent resources. Now Yuan Tian's idea is to receive all these fleeing refugees, who are a large number of engineers and scientists. P.S. 100 flowers plus updates. 30 evaluation votes plus updates, seeking flowers for collection, no one can see it. 100 evaluation votes plus 2 updates, 200 evaluation votes plus 3 updates, right to death. 